Am I the a-hole for calling my sister-in-law cruel for excluding her brother, my husband, from her upcoming wedding? My husband, 32, grew up with one sibling, his sister, 28. Their parents separated. And because of that, they drifted apart because each one of them chose one parent to stay with. He had a rocky relationship with sister-in-law growing up as a result, but later got to work out their differences. My husband is a jokester. Sister-in-law complains about being on the receiving end of his pranks and jokes whenever they spent time together. She claimed that because of him. She lost her high school friends, her high school sweetheart, and lots of self-esteem because his pranks wore her down emotionally and mentally. Now they're in a better place. But old habits die hard, and my husband is still the jokester he was years ago. Sister-in-law got engaged two months ago and invited my husband and me. Unfortunately, my husband decided it was a good time to pull a prank on her during the party and lied about her fiancé's brother having an accident that night. He was joking, of course, but things got out of hands and the party got cancelled. My sister-in-law yelled at my husband and hasn't been speaking to him ever since. Now her wedding is coming up, but she hasn't yet sent her brother an invite. Seeing him sad and depressed made me call her to ask what the deal was. She bluntly said she wasn't going to send him an invite to her wedding after he ruined her engagement party. But I thought that was excessive. First of all, it was a prank. A regular one that he pulls all the time and she and everyone else reacted over the top. And besides, he already apologized multiple times. And in my opinion, that should be enough for him to be granted some grace and forgiveness. She said sorry, but she wasn't going to take a risk and invite him so he'd ruin her wedding. And besides that, her fiancé does not feel comfortable having him there, and she agreed with him. I was stunned and called her cruel, because this is her brother, and he never had malicious intentions towards her. Yet she keeps getting offended and oversensitive over everything he does, and at the end of the day, they're family. She asked that I respect her choice, but I said that is not okay seeing how sad her brother is because he doesn't want to miss her wedding. She ended a call after saying she owes no one nothing. I found that real harsh and cruel. It felt like she keeps punishing him over something that was in the past. My husband started crying when I told him about it, but there were actually some family members agreeing with her decision and telling me off for defending my husband's horrid attitude. Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole. That's not something to joke about. I know the mental distress of a person who is the recipient of cruel jokes like that. Your husband is an a-hole for thinking that was a funny joke. And you're an a-hole for thinking your sister-in-law is cruel. Essentially agreeing with your a-hole husband. You both sound toxic. And I don't blame sister-in-law for cutting you both out. You're the a-hole. Your husband's jokes aren't funny. They're cruel. I grew up with someone like that. When his first wife died, he sent balloons and a pony cart to her parents' house on her birthday so they could take little Joanne for a carriage ride. His own late wife. He thought it was hilarious. Her parents? Not so much. Your husband's cut from the same cloth. No wonder she doesn't want him at the wedding. He's likely to stand up and object and claim she has three other husbands. You and your husband are raging a-holes. Totally you're the a-hole. When people say the line of, oh, it's just a prank, you know deep down they are a-holes as they are trying to cover up being pricks to people by trying to calm down it's a joke bit. As much as you want to try and cover for him, he absolutely had malicious intent towards his sister for traumatizing her for many, many years. Come on, man. It's just a joke. F off with that garbage. I hate the it's a joke line. It's a second insult to suggest the person is on the receiving end of cruelty to suggest they don't have a sense of humor. And it's always said by the bully. It lied about her fiancé's brother having an accident that night. Ha 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 OMG, I can't stop laughing at that one. I'm gonna go tell everyone I know how funny this was. Oh, by the way, my actual brother died in an actual accident. So it's even more thigh-slappingly funny for me. Yeah, you're the a-hole. And you know it. And he's the biggest a-hole of all. That poor bride is probably terrified what will happen to her car, house, friends, or pets while he's banned from the wedding. And desperate to play another hilarious prank. I hope she's got security all around her wedding home and possessions. You're the a-hole. Your husband isn't a jokester. He's an infantile bully. And you know it. 
He has proven time and time again that he can't be trusted. He brought this on himself, and no one else is at fault but him. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my female 28's fiancé male 27 to drop his groomswoman? My fiancé Ben and I met at work. We worked for a tech company where I handled office management stuff, and he was part of the customer support team. His best friend James worked here too, and also a woman, Alex. Before Ben and I started dating, he and James and Alex became a friendship group. The three of them liked a lot of the same hobbies and stuff, and James and Alex encouraged Ben to get training and move from customer support to being a developer like them. When Ben's apartment flooded, he lived with Alex, and even after he moved out, he still hung out there a ton. When Ben and I started dating, I still wasn't bothered by the friendship too much, because it mostly revolved around activities that I wasn't specially interested in, and Alex always seemed supportive of us as a couple. She was also the only woman at the place that worked on the actual tech side of things and not in the office, so it made sense that guys were the only work friends she could have. She and I did try to get together more once Ben and I were a couple, but it kind of trailed off because we just didn't have a lot in common, and it felt like we were trying too hard. I never got the impression she didn't like me or was jealous or whatever, just kind of two different people. In a way, Ben and I finally got engaged, and we were talking about our bridesmaid and groomsman choices, and he kind of threw me a curveball and said he wanted Alex as one of his groomswomen. I thought he was kidding and laughed, but he was dead serious, at his including her in all of the bachelor party activities and things as well. It seemed a little odd to me, but I shrugged it off. But then I was in the kitchen the other day while Ben was in the other room at his computer chatting with James and gaming. James asked if Alex was going to be wearing a dress or a suit for the wedding, and Ben said a suit, to which James replied, she'll be the hottest guy there. Then Ben replied with, probably the hottest girl too. Yes, Alex is attractive, she's really tall and stereotypically hot. They laughed, so I wasn't mad quite yet, just chalking it up to stupid banter. Then James said, for a second there, I thought you two might start dating, and my fiancé came back with, yeah, I could never land a girl like that. I sat there in the kitchen totally gobsmacked, like, how do you not feel like the runner-up? Later, when Ben was done gaming and we were sitting down to eat, I told him I was no longer comfortable with Alex being in the wedding, and he would have to drop her as part of his party. A huge fight ensued, and I told him what I overheard, and he said it was just talk, and he and Alex never dated or had a physical relationship, so I needed to get over it. I feel like I never want to see this person again, especially on my wedding day, but at the same time, I know she has been one of Ben's best friends since before he and I knew each other or were a couple, so am I overreacting? Added to Dwed. Just to be clear, I don't have any problem with Alex as a person, and I'm not mad at her or blaming her. I just don't want a reminder of what Ben said standing up at the altar while I'm getting married. As far as the marriage itself, the situation is less than 48 hours old at this point, so even continuing with the wedding may not be what happens. Oh, honey. The problem here isn't the groom's woman, it's the groom. Best you've figured that out now, and fix it if it can be fixed before diving into a lifetime with Ben. Exactly. Hopi deserves to be with someone who sees her as the most attractive person at her wedding. Hopi's not a consolation prize. Why is she still proceeding with the wedding? She seriously insists on marrying a guy who settled for her and thinks his best friend is the hottest chick? It's mind-blowing for me to pit in which this woman's self-esteem has fallen. You're the a-hole to yourself. Whether or not the wedding will proceed has yet to be determined. I genuinely hope you reconsider marrying this douche. You deserve a man who has eyes only for you. And yes, they exist. Yeah, I could never land a girl like that. I am so sorry that happened. Rethink your wedding because this accidentally let you find out where you stand in his eyes, all the while pretending it was just talk. The only reason they never dated or had a physical relationship is because she can do so much better, not for lack of him wanting to. And so can you. Not day home. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend her boyfriend is not allowed at my wedding? Anyway, I'm supposed to be getting married early October 2022. 
It's not gonna be a big wedding or anything, but me and my fiancé both have friends that we don't want to leave out. I have this friend, Amanda. We have known each other since high school and we aren't incredibly close by any means. But we are still somewhat good friends and hang out regularly and I would like her to be there. The problem is, I just recently found out who she is dating now and she wants to bring him as her plus one. My sister Lily and her ex Steve broke up about 10 months ago because she found out he was cheating. She was heartbroken and I know along with that pain she still has a lot of resentment for him and doesn't even like hearing his name. He was an awful boyfriend, so my family has no problem with him no longer being in our lives. Then eight months ago, Amanda told me she had started talking to someone and she really liked him and everything. She wouldn't tell me who, not even his name because she said she didn't want to share anything about him till it got more serious. I didn't really understand his secrecy, but it didn't force her to tell me anything and just let her know I was happy for her and hope it all worked out. Well, last week, she told me she was dating Steve. They had gotten more serious, and she wanted to make their relationship public to the people they care about. She also said she knew how much I disliked him and what he had done to my sister, and hoped I would try to understand their love and be happy for her and try to see him in a different light. I was a little shocked at first, since I really didn't expect her to be with a guy like him, and she knew what kind of person and boyfriend he was but it isn't my place, and I told her that I'm happy she's happy, and that was that. Well, two days later, we are texting about the wedding and everything, and she mentioned Steve being her plus one. I do not want him there. Not only because I know my sister, who's my maid of honor, doesn't want him there, but also because I don't like him and neither does my fiancé. I immediately told her that Steve was not invited to the wedding. She was confused. And I explained to her that I was sorry and I'm happy for her, but I didn't want him there. At first, she thought it was just because my sister would be, and kept saying that they wouldn't even be near each other and it would be fine. But then I explained that with everything that happened, we didn't want him there. I said sorry again, but she kept saying how I don't want her to be happy, how I just want to live in the past, how I want to punish her for finding love, stuff like that. None of that is true. And I tried to tell her that, but she stopped responding. So now I'm left feeling like a complete a-hole, and I don't know if I should just let Steve come or not. Now for the top comments. Not a home. She wants to bring the guy that cheated on your sister, a person that you are very close to and isn't a wedding party, to your wedding? I think you're in the clear here. I can almost guarantee she didn't start talking to him eight months ago either. 10,000% this. Hence the BS secrecy. I assume Steve was cheating with her when he was with her sister. But how the heck would they not be near each other in the same venue? Your wedding is not a platform for their crappy coming out. And invite her and don't think twice about it. Enjoy your beautiful drama-free wedding, guilt-free. If it ends your pseudo-friendship, so be it. She sounds a bit unhinged anyway. Your wedding is not a platform for their crappy coming out. This is the thing. Amanda and Steve are hoping to use the wedding as their way to reintegrate into the OP social circle and make Opie's sister the bad guy for any lingering resentment. So tacky. Just uninvite Amanda kindly and directly. I am happy if you're happy. But you did choose a partner who has a bad history with my sister who is very important to me. It's simply not possible for Steve to ever attend a wedding. I don't want him there. It's not up for debate. I think it's best if you don't come either. You're not the a-hole. P.S. You know Steve had Amanda on the line while he was with your sister, right? Even if she's not the other woman, she's the one he monkey branched her right after your sister dumped him. So he was, at least, laying the groundwork with chats, etc. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to give my fiancé money for his habit? Me 27 female and my fiancé 28 male have been going through some financial and marital struggles. I've been at my job for two years and my income is a pretty good amount. Fiancé, let's call him Tyler, works a minimum wage fast food job. I've never brought up the income difference to him, mainly because it doesn't really matter who the breadwinner is and he loves his job. Recently, over the course of four months, he has been spending well above his means, including some of my paychecks and even savings. 
I have two car payments, insurances, bills, etc., which does help with bills, but not the cars because I believe they are my vehicles, my responsibility. We live in a state where weed is legal, and that's where most of the money is going. I've tried keeping us afloat to no avail. I've begged him to cut down on how much he buys, and he always says he will, but never does. We've had multiple arguments regarding this. So far, we've had to move due to not being able to afford the rent due to said spending habits. So we decided mutually it would be beneficial to move back in with our parents as to save money. I finally put my foot down when we lost our home and told him I was separating finances at Axis and that I would no longer be helping support his habit. He also recently lost his job due to his habit and not wanting to go to work, so he is no longer contributing. He has been begging me for money for his habit, and I told him no. He called me a selfish a-hole, went on about how I always brag about my pay, which I've never done due to wanting to stay humble. I didn't come from much, and I'm trying to build a better life than what I had, and said that he needed money for food, gas, etc. Now, I have no problem helping him with necessary things as such, but I know that whatever money I give him will go to his habit. I feel bad for not giving him anything, but I'm wondering if I'm the a-hole because what if he really does need it for said necessities? But I've given him money to pass for that and it went to his habit. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole except for how much of an a-hole you're being to yourself for planning to marry this guy. You can do so, so much better. Please respect yourself enough to leave. This. And also, OP, you should consider getting rid of one car and cutting bills. You said you were in good income but lost your home because of his minimum wage paycheck not contributing and dipping into savings. I'm assuming your rainy day fund went to a lot of weed? Lose the boyfriend, cut back, and go about your life. Not day haul for saying no. But if you stay with him and try to purchase another property and then lose it again whether it's splurging on weed or not as a cause, then I would have no sympathy for you at all. Not day haul. Coming from a fellow user, I can tell you that this isn't a habit. It's an addiction. When it gets to the point where you spend all your money on it, it's a clear issue. I know you love him at all, but it truly sounds like you guys have different priorities and want different things. You seem to have a good head on your shoulders and shouldn't be waiting around for some loser. Sorry. As a fellow smoker, you're 100% right. I actually stopped using for a while because it was a luxury I couldn't afford, and nothing helps my insomnia slash pain better than ganja. But if it comes down to paying bills slash buying food or getting it, it has got to take a backseat. This guy definitely has a problem if he's losing his job slash home, 